Hi, my name is Jessica Hotchkiss and I am a graduate student in the Counselor Education Program here at NDSU. Death, disease, injury, illness, all things that as adults we try and brush under the rug, experiences we've had, but usually we try to push them off to the side. Now what if I were to tell you to explain that to a young child? Most students, the reality is, are dealing with these th situations every day and they're having to go back into the school setting. So students are facing chronic illnesses when they should be deciding what they're going to play on the playground. Instead, they're having to decide, can I play on the playground? And as school counselors, we're in a unique opportunity to look at these situations and decide how we're able to help these students. The truth is that medical technologies have changed the way we look at diseases. So fatal prognoses have now changed into things that we can, we can treat, we can help. So chronic conditions. They don't necessarily have to be terminal, but they're things that do require hospital, hospitalizations and can, continued treatment over time. So with that, how do students go back into an environment after extended hospital stays with something that might now be foreign to them? Knowing the importance of school for a child's growth, my research looks at students that are going back into the school setting after being hospitalized for a chronic illness. More specifically, I wanted to look at the adults who are working with these students. Are they prepared to work to the, with the students who are facing some of these issues? So my research studied, um, conducted a survey for school counselors to look at the level of preparedness for working with these populations and what educational and training needs they would need to be fully effective. What if I were to tell you that the American School Counseling Association does not have any specific guidelines for working with students in this population? And then what if I were to tell you that it's unethical for school counselors to work with these students if they have not had the education, training, or experience in this population? Knowing these things, I focused on the two questions. What are the levels of preparedness that these school counselors are facing? And what are the educational and training needs that they need, that they need to have? Knowing that there's very little research in this area, I conducted my own survey and created it actually to address these questions. I asked school counselors how prepared they felt they were in these areas and what the educational and training needs are. Preliminary results match from my initial findings of what I assumed they would be was that school counselors, most of them worked with at least one student who had been facing one of these issues. However, school counselors also said, said overwhelmingly that they did not have enough experience in this area, that their graduate program did not adequately prepare them to work with students in this population, specifically students with medical needs and how to facilitate coping. Also, we know that as students, we have the, we have the opportunity to grow and learn in these school environments. So if they do not have the adequate resources, how are we able to do that? We know that doctors usually treat things like diseases, illnesses. However, school counselors have the unique opportunity to be in the school setting and work with these students facing these chronic illnesses. You treat a disease, you win, you lose. You treat a person, I guarantee you, you'll win no matter what the outcome. Therefore, my research is looking at are school counselors working in an ethical position? Are they helping these students re-entering the school system? And based on the results that I'll find after these pre preliminary results, we'll look at what do we need to do from here. Thank you.